Hi everyone, and welcome back to our electronics tutorial series. My name is Aaron from AX Electronic, and today we're going to continue on the topic of BJTs and look at one of the simplest applications of these BJTs as a switch. So, just like MOSFETs, we can use these BJTs to control some higher current loads by using maybe a lower current supply. So if you have something like a microcontroller or a sensitive control circuit, it may not be able to provide all the current that something like a motor might need. So in order to protect your devices, what you can do is you can use a transistor, something like a BJT, in order to kind of isolate your devices, make it to where you can control this large current using only a little tiny control current, okay? So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So in case you don't remember, this is an NPN BJT. NPN tells us that it's kind of like an in-channel MOSFET, and it's got three pins, collector, emitter, and base. And if we apply a current into the base through to the emitter, a larger current will flow from collector to the emitter. Now, we can use this to control those larger currents using only that tiny input current. And these transistors have a property called beta, which is the ratio of their collector current versus their base current. Okay? Now, this ratio of the collector current versus base current, it's going to tell us how much base current we need in order to drive a certain amount of current through the collector. And we're going to use that in this application in order to see maybe how we can design these switches exactly so they, or so they operate exactly how we want. So let's go into a realistic application using a real transistor, the 2N2222. Now, let me move my notes down so I can get some of the information. So the first thing that we're going to do is that we need to understand how much current it is that we are trying to control. So if we want this transistor to be operating like a switch, whenever it is turned on, we want it to act like it's not even there and like it's just a short circuit to ground. And in that case, we're going to have our supply voltage, which is 10 volts, all the way across this 10 ohm resistance. So if we have 10 volts across 10 ohms, that's going to give us one amp. So that's the amount of current that we're shooting to control, okay? So we know the amount of current that we need through our collector. <clears throat> Now, if we know that we need one amp through our collector, we also know that the collector current is equal to beta times our base current, okay? So if we know our beta and we know our collector current, we can use this to calculate the base current that we need in order to actually drive this load, okay? So let's assume from the data sheet that beta is about 50, okay? Now, beta can change quite a bit depending on where exactly we're operating. So if we're driving a lot more current, maybe our beta is smaller or larger. And if we're driving less current, again, maybe it's smaller or larger. So it's really difficult to tell without testing, and especially if the data sheet doesn't provide you with very much information. So if we assume that this is true, this beta equals 50 is true, we can do IC over beta, and that'll give us the base current that we need. So if we do one amp over 50, that's gonna tell us that we need 20 milliamps as our base current. So we need to drive 20 milliamps into this base. Now, driving a specific amount of current is a little bit more difficult than uh, you might actually imagine because mostly our microcontrollers and control circuits are gonna work with voltages. So for example, on the Arduino, we can either provide five volts or ground from any one of our uh, GPIO pins. We can't do just a specific amount of current. It's gonna drive however much it's either limited to or uh, however much it can, and it might actually cause it to break. So remember, we have this diode from our base to the emitter, and that means that if we apply five volts here, we're going to have amps and amps of current going through this diode, which is not good, okay? And we'll talk about how we're gonna tackle that here in just a moment. Okay, but this kind of gives you some sort of sense of how you can calculate these different values. Now, last thing, let's just go ahead and calculate what our emitter current is going to be. So remember, if we have one amp coming into our collector, we also have 20 milliamps coming in from our base, our emitter has to get rid of all of that because the collector is going in, the base is going in, and the emitter is the only one that's going out. So our emitter has to equal, or our emitter current has to equal the sum of the base, or the collector, and the base currents. Okay, we can also call that beta plus one times IB. Okay, and in this case, it's just 1.02 amps. So we have to make sure that our emitter can handle that, that all of our uh, circuits downstream can handle that. But in this case, we're just connected to ground, so we're probably good. Alrighty, so how we can actually fix this problem with our diode drop here is using a resistor. Okay, so this is going to be our base resistor, RB. 
And what it's going to do is it's going to act as a current limiting resistor. If you remember from our diodes video, we can't just connect a voltage directly to a diode, and we need to have this current limiting resistor in order to set the maximum current. So we know that there's going to be about 0.7 volts across the base to the emitter. So we know this is going to be about 0.7 volts. So for example, if we have 5 volts on our input, that means that this resistor is going to have 4.3 volts across it. Now we can use this resistance or, yeah, so we can use the voltage across this resistor and the current that we'd like to supply, 20 milliamps, to calculate that optimum resistor. So if we throw that into some calculation, 4.3 divided by 20 milliamps, that's going to give us a resistance of 215 ohms. So if our RB, if our base resistor is equal to 215 ohms, what's going to happen is that whenever we have 5 volts here, we're going to end up pushing 20 milliamps into our base and that is going to try and source one amp from our output. Okay, so now this is kind of working how we intended it to. And then if we have, again, zero volts here, we're not going to be able to overcome that diode drop, so no current is going to flow whatsoever. And that means no current is going to flow into the, or into the collector. Okay, so now we have turned this switch off or like opened this switch. Now, something that we need to consider is that having this resistor here actually sets a little bit of a limit for us. Okay, so it does set a little bit of a limit on how much current we're able to control. So let me give you an example. If we change this from a 10 ohm resistor to a 5 ohm resistor, now in an ideal world, we would want our switch to be able to handle 2 amps whenever it closes. Okay, so we want our switch to be able to handle 2 amps whenever it closes. But we are limited by the amount of current gain, beta, and the input current. So we know that our collector current in an ideal world is going to be beta times IB and that means that our transistor is going to try and source one amp because that's what we designed for. Okay, So our transistor is going to try and source one amp instead of two. So we're still going to only be sourcing one amp. So picking out this resistor actually comes with a little bit of a limit. So you need to make sure you're picking that resistor out to, to accommodate the highest current that you want to control. Because, for example, if this was not 10, but was instead 20 ohms, we're trying to pull 0.5 amps in an ideal world. Well, whenever we provide our 20 milliamp control current, we still have this beta is equal to 50, our transistor is going to try as hard as it can to pull this same 1 amp. But it's just simply not possible. No matter how much of a short circuit this transistor becomes, it's never going to be able to pull that one amp. So what ends up happening is that our current becomes limited. So we're able to control this five amps on and off using just this same setup with the same 215 ohm resistor. So this base resistor here is going to end up setting the limit for the amount of current that you can control with this BJT. So it is something important that you need to know. We still definitely need to have that resistor there in order to limit the amount of current going into our base, but it is going to establish a limit on the amount of current that we control using our collector. Okay, so that is definitely something that you just need to keep in mind. Now, like we said, you can see that this is fairly easy, okay, but it's not quite as easy as a MOSFET. So we needed an additional component, we needed that extra resistor on our base, and we also had to calculate the amount of current that's going to flow. So there was a little bit more complex. And in addition, this BJT is going to have a little bit higher on resistance because it's not going to be a short circuit. And compared to a MOSFET, it's just not going to act like as good of a switch. So if you do need some really high current applications, I would recommend using a MOSFET because then that's going to allow you to source as a whole lot more current and with a whole lot less on resistance. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'm more than happy to answer them. If you like this content, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to see more. It does keep me extremely highly motivated to see new likes and new subscribers. Other than that, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.